Welcome everyone. To complete this section of the course, let's discuss configuration parameters. Gemini allows you to configure some parameters to change the output results of the model. These parameters include temperature, max output tokens, top K and top P, stop sequences, and then candidate count. I should note that at the time of this filming, candidate count can only be a value of one. So let's explore these parameters in a little more detail. First, let's start off with a simple parameter, and that is the max output token. The amount of output tokens is set to the absolute maximum that the model can produce by default. That is to say, for Gemini Pro, it can only produce a maximum of 8,192 tokens, and that's actually the default value. However, you could adjust this parameter in a generation configuration object that we'll see later on to try to get shorter responses or cut off responses by setting the maximum output tokens to a lower value. Setting the maximum output tokens to a lower value in combination with a prompt asking for a shorter reply tends to work well to get your model to generate a shorter response. Then there's also stop sequences. So you can actually specify a list of stop sequence values to stop the text generation. For example, maybe you're asking Gemini to produce a SQL query and you know SQL queries end up with a semicolon at the end of the stop sequence. So maybe you set a semicolon as the stop sequence to make sure Gemini doesn't continue to pass the query along with an additional explanation. You'll sometimes realize that Gemini, especially in chat mode, is very helpful and tends to explain the results that it returns to you. But if you just wanted the SQL query, you could hard code a stop sequence like a semicolon to make sure it ends the second it stops the SQL query. And there's also candidate count. I should note that currently Gemini is limited to one candidate response, but in the future, the Gemini model will allow you to ask for multiple candidates to a single prompt. Now to best understand the more complex parameters, that is temperature, top K, and top P, let's recall our discussion of how LLMs work that we talked about at the very start of the course, where we described the LLM or large language model creating a probability distribution. So recall this process of going from words to tokens to vectors to then creating a probability distribution that we can sample from for the next most likely token. So temperature, top K and top P end up playing around with this probability distribution. Let's begin with temperature. The term temperature actually comes from statistical thermodynamics. You can think of this as affecting the sampling of the distribution of tokens. Lower temperatures will cause the model to sample the most likely tokens, while higher temperatures will push the model to sample less likely tokens. So in other words, think of a higher temperature that is closer to the max value of one to give you more creative results. Keep in mind that if you go too high of a temperature, it could sometimes go off topic or just produce tests that seems random. Lower temperatures closer to zero give you less creative results. That should be used in situations where you expect a singular correct answer. So if you were designing a quiz where you knew there was one correct answer, like what's the capital of France, you should set a lower temperature to always try to prick the most probable tokens. Now, thinking back to our discussion of the probability of tokens here, note that we have probabilities for a variety of tokens. So how can we use that in terms of top P and top K? Let's focus a little more on this idea. Beginning with top K. Top K means you would only consider the top K, that is an integer of your choosing, amount of tokens. For example, if K is equal to three, you would only consider the three most likely tokens before you actually conduct your sampling. So for example, if we took a look at asking the model for the capital of Paris, and in this example, we have like six results here. If I said K is equal to three, then I'm only going to consider the top three most probable results before I actually conduct my sampling. Notice here that in either situation, Paris is still the most probable token to be picked. Now what about top P? Top P considers the cumulative probability of the tokens, basically where you add up the probabilities from the most likely to the least likely. And that actually allows you to cut off at a certain cumulative probability. For example, if you set P equal to 0 0.97, that would stop considering any tokens once the cumulative probability reaches 97%. So for example, we can see from our original probability distribution, if I only consider Paris and Versailles as my answers, that hits my threshold of the 97% cumulative probability because I'm adding 95% to 2% and then I have 97. If I was considering 98% as my top P, then I would also add in the next token. 
So again, here you can limit the amount of tokens you're looking at via a cumulative probability versus top K, which just considered an integer number of tokens to consider. Let's explore these configuration parameters and how to use them with the Python API. Okay, here I am in the Jupyter Notebook. I've already imported google.generativeai as genai. I've configured my API key and I've already selected Gemini Pro as the model. So how do we create a generation configuration object? To do this, you'll say config is equal to genai.types and then generation config and then here's where you can actually pass in the values. So for example, I can ask for a higher temperature and keep in mind our notebook gives you the ranges for all the parameters you can pass in. So temperature goes from zero to one. I could pick a higher value like the max value. I can also select max output tokens to be something lower than the max like only 2000. And then I could play around in the future of candidate counts, etc. And what I'm going to do here is I'm actually then going to create a little function called get response that takes in a prompt and a generation configuration file. And the way we actually pass this in is just as another value inside of our generate content. So I'm going to call model.generate content. And just like in our text generation lecture, previously we just passed in the prompt. If we take a look at generate content, that parameter was actually this contents parameter up here. So the prompt is just technically a string, and then you have generation config. You can also pass in safety settings or streaming is equal to true or false, but right now we're just concerned with contents and generation configuration. So I'm gonna say contents is equal to the prompt, and then I'm also going to say generation config is equal to the config that I just made. But in this case, I'm going to make this into a function. And the reason I'm making this into a function is just to save time in the call. So then I can return the response. This is basically just gonna save me from having to call this entire line. I can just say get response prompt generation config. So let's try it out. I'm going to say my result is equal to get response, and let's pass in a prompt like, um, tell me a story about the moon. And then we're also gonna pass in the config file that we made earlier. And then we'll say, let me scroll down so you can see this, result.txt, and let's actually print this out. We'll say print out the result.txt. And there it is, there's your story. And remember, for more creative endeavors, um, you want to choose a higher temperature rather than a lower temperature. And in case you're wondering how you would actually know what the parameters are again, well, you could reference our notebook. So I just want to point out, if you go to the text generation folder and then go to generation configuration, remember we have these in the first lecture of the course to download, you can go to generation configuration, you can check it out here, and we have explanations of all the values. So if I scroll down here, you see temperature, we explain low temperatures and high temperatures, the range, as well as the default settings. So notice that Gemini Pro Vision goes with a lower temperature, which kind of makes sense. You don't want it to just make stuff up about images it sees. We'll talk about vision and images later on. And then as you scroll down, you'll see examples, and then max output tokens, the ranges, the defaults, etc. And we do that for everything for you. So for you know top K, we'll show you the range that's possible, one through 40, and then um, Gemini Pro versus Gemini Pro Vision. And keep in mind, some of them do have just like none, which defaults to like the max value. You can check out the documentation for more information on that. But I just wanted to point out that as a resource. So let's play around with some of these and then we'll basically get an idea of the different parameters. So the one you're probably gonna play with the most is things like temperature. And again, higher temperature yields more creative results and lower temperatures yield uh, results that are always gonna choose like the most probable text, so less creative results. So for things like creative endeavors, like tell me a story about the moon, you probably want a configuration that has a higher temperature. And we just saw that here. I could also just set temperature equal to zero and then maybe give it a little more room in max tokens, like 3000, run this again, and then we'll say tell me a story about the moon. And it's still probably gonna be creative here because I am kind of 
prompting it with a creative story about the moon, but it may be uh, just giving us, you know, really kind of a default story. And you can see uh, if you run this, you'll probably get the same or similar results. So it's probably going to always start with like once upon a time in the vast expanse of the cosmos. So even if I run this again, remember this is a stochastic process. It's not deterministic, but I'm asking it for a story and I'm saying choose the most likely tokens when you're asked for a story. So that's probably why it's going to start with like once upon a time versus if I start at a very high temperature and also play around with the prompt, it is important to note you should combine good prompts with you know, relevant temperatures. So for something like tell me facts about the moon, I would want a lower temperature. Tell me a creative story about the moon, I would want a higher temperature. So that's what I want you to keep in mind. It's not just the parameters. It's the parameters in conjunction with a prompt that makes sense for those parameters. For example, Let's imagine I wanted a very short story about the moon. I could try to set something like max output tokens to something really small, like only 500 tokens. In which case, I also want to combine that. And let me cut this here and put it in the same cell. So we can just run a single cell and I'll print the results out here as well. There we go. And I can also combine the idea of only asking for like 500 max output tokens with the prompt. So tell me a very short story about the moon. And again, that's good prompt engineering, understanding the parameters inside of your prompt as well. What you would not want to do is shorten max output tokens and still have something that says like, tell me a very long story about the moon, because then they're going to be in conflict with each other. And in certain cases, you may just get an empty result if you ask for too few tokens and it's not able to actually return a result for that. But again, I'm asking for a very short story and I'm, you know, kind of physically, so to speak, limiting it to only 500 tokens. Let's see the results here. And I still have this older result. You can see how long the story was. It was technically still limited to like 2000 tokens, but let's see what the result was of this uh, shorter story. Um, looks a little shorter here. We can actually check that. I can go even shorter. Remember these are tokens, not words. So I can say something like 250 and we'll say extremely short run that configuration again, and with only 250 tokens and a prompt that says extremely short story, we should start getting shorter and shorter stories. Note now that how much I had to scroll there. Um, it's you know really just a few sentences of a story. I can keep going shorter and shorter or longer and longer, in which case I'd probably wanna keep the default max output tokens, which was 800. And again, if you're wondering, how do I figure out what these parameters are? You can just check the documentation string on generation configuration. You can see there's candidate count. Uh, keep in mind right now that's limited to one. Stop sequences, we'll talk about that in a second. Max output tokens, temperature, top K and top uh, P. So we just explored uh, temperature. If you really want to play around with values, you can use top K and top P to try to limit and get more repeatable results. Keep in mind, nothing is guaranteed to be repeated but if you only select top K of one, which basically means always choose the next most probable token. So for example, let's say uh, top underscore K is equal to one. That's saying only consider one, the most probable token. And if combine that with something like top P, which remember is the probability. So the range goes from zero to one. So I can choose a very low top P basically saying, once you have a single token, you've broken the cumulative probability threshold. So zero and uh, one for top K and zero for top P. That basically says only consider that very first most probable token. And let's try adding in temperature of zero as well. And then I'm going to say, tell me five facts. Let's say even shorter. Tell me three facts about the moon. And Notice that I'm combining this with kind of a factual prompt, so it's seeking facts, and the top K is one, meaning it's only considering the most singular likely token. Top P is zero, so I'm even using that as a cutoff. Typically, you only use either top K or top P because they kind of can sometimes not conflict with each other, but just be redundant. So top P of zero and top K of one are kind of redundant here, keep that in mind. And then temperature of zero is also playing around with sampling. So let's run this and I'm gonna copy this and I'm also going to run it in the next cell. 
so we can see if the results actually change. So the three facts were uh, something about the Apollo 11 mission, um, tidally locked to the Earth, and very thin atmosphere. And notice that when I ran these results again, I'm getting back pretty much the exact same results. So why is that? That's because I've only set it to always sample like the most probable tokens. So as it repeats those tokens, it's always choosing the most probable one. So I can try to force the model to always give me the same results. Keep in mind, this is definitely not guaranteed, especially for things that are like more creative. You could technically kind of slip into one other token here, but if you want to try your model to be as deterministic as possible, you can set these parameters to a very low temperature, very low top P, and then just one top K considered. So that's understanding top K, top P, and temperature. Last thing I want to mention are stop sequences, which is technically a list. So let's play around with an example that's easy to understand. So we'll say top sequences is equal to a list, and I'm going to set my sequence as x. Basically, once it hits x, it's going to stop generating. And remember, this is a list, so I can also pass in like a lowercase x as well. And then either a capital case x or a lowercase x, it's going to stop generating results. So I'm going to ask it to list the alphabet. List the letters of the alphabet. I'll go ahead and run this, and we should see it stop the moment it hits either capital X or lowercase x. And there it is. It basically stops at W, creates that extra bullet point, and then no more results. So what's a more realistic situation where you could use this? Maybe you're trying to automate customer support emails. So I can say, sincerely as a cutoff because I actually want a human to review and sign it and then they can choose whether they say like regards or sincerely etc. This also helps the model just write the letter not give you extra commentary. So for example I can say write a customer support email that thanks the customer for their purchase of shoes. And I'll also instruct it to end it with sincerely. And let me capitalize the S there. So in combination with a good prompt and a stop sequence that makes sense, I should expect to get a customer support email and then be cut off right when it ends. So let's try this out and see if we get the results we expect. I'll go ahead and run this. All right, so I see a subject, dear customer name, shoe company, so things I can fill in. And then it says, thank you for choosing shoe company. We truly appreciate your business. Now, did the stop sequence actually do anything? Well, let's cut it off and see what the result was. So now there is no stop sequence. In fact, the generation configuration is all defaults. And you can see here it says, sincerely, company name. And remember, you can always combine a stop sequence with your own addition of strings. So maybe you wanted that sincerely there, but not company name. You could either place company name in brackets as the stop sequence, or you could just append using Python the sincerely after you declared it as your stop sequence. Lots of things to play around with here. And the thing you should get across the most in this lecture is don't just rely on parameters or prompts by themselves. Use them in combination with each other to really hone it in on what you want your prompts and resulting text to be. And remember the generation configuration file here, we've been passing it into model.generateContent. You could also pass that in when you're sending a message to the chat model as well. Okay, that's it for text generation. Let's move on to images with ProVision. We'll see you at the next section of the course.